after nearly nine months' journey and 350 million miles, a most audacious landing. Completely automated, with no human backup. This is what NASA called its seven minutes of terror. Curiosity has landed. Its mission, to continue NASA's exploration of the Red Planet, analyze its rocks, look for water, and prepare for human exploration. And this is what it looks like up close. This is Curiosity's Earthbound twin. It's identical to the Curiosity that's on Mars, apart from it doesn't have the superpowers, it doesn't have the nuclear power source, and it doesn't have the laser, but everything else is pretty much the same. And it is just amazing to think that something just like this is currently crawling across the surface of Mars. The reason it's here in JPL's Mars Yard is to make sure that whatever Curiosity encounters, the team can recreate the situation here and work out how to deal with it before trying it for real on Mars. Today, new Curiosity pilots are being trained in controlling its two-metre-long, five-jointed robotic arm. On the end, a selection of tools, including an alpha particle X-ray spectrometer, a lens imager, a sample processing unit, and a brush. You always need a brush. And driving the rover is itself an experience. It's more like playing a video game, to be honest. Uh, the, the rover takes uh, stereoscopic images. And uh, when we're driving, for example, the first thing we do is we put on 3D glasses. So we uh, look at what the rover sees. Uh, and based on what uh, we have in front of us, we uh, create the actual commanding that Curiosity uses to perform the functions we want her to do. It's a slow journey though, so racing gamers need not apply. The time it takes for radio signals to reach Mars makes real-time manual steering impossible. Controllers enter a whole day's worth of commands in one go, after which Curiosity executes them at a breakneck speed of 30 meters per hour. Sometimes the team here will use this for training and practice. For example, they'll stick Curiosity somewhere and then they'll lock their drivers in a darkened room and expect them to work out where they are and then navigate to a particular point. For example, that rock has been used for many drilling practices. I can see that from all the holes. And of course, that won't always be on a flat surface. That's a 20 degree slope. And over here is a 30 degree slope. And to give you an idea of how hard that is, I weigh 70 kilos, Curiosity weighs 900 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> but even covering just an average of 200 meters per day, and with the ability to keep the body level as it goes up and down slopes, there are still dangers. Nightmare is we actually get it stuck somewhere. Having it drive into a, a sand pit uh, and having it get stuck, we're very sensitive to, um, to that. On September the 11th this year, Curiosity arrived at the base of Mount Sharp and prepared to start climbing the mountain. But its mission has already been hailed a success. In March 2013, after drilling into its very first rock, it found evidence that the water that once existed on Mars might have been potable. In other words, there were good conditions for life to have formed. It's amazing uh, to know that there is something out there that could potentially harbor a life. Um, and so the conditions were ripe for that. Curiosity is the latest and largest of NASA's robots to explore the red planet so far. But it is nothing compared to what's in the garage down the road. This is Athlete. So Athlete is the all-terrain, hex-limbed, extraterrestrial explorer. The idea is that this is a cargo-hauling robot that won't get stuck on the lunar surface, which basically means we want to go off-roading, off-planet. It's a prototype, but could one day be hauling everything from drilling equipment to homes across alien terrain. This is the prototype Athlete, or to be more accurate, 
half the prototype because the other three legs would go over here and in between those two halves goes this, the cargo pad. This is where you put the stuff that you want to lift up and move about. Curiosity seems a bit fragile in comparison. Athlete is designed for heavy duty work. Watching out for obstacles from every angle, this thing will follow its daily instructions and can autonomously make its own decisions to avoid things that get in the way. And the coolest thing of all is the way it gets itself out of trouble. So Athlete has small wheels on the end of six fully articulated robotic limbs. And that means we can roll across easy terrain and if we get stuck, we can just walk out of it or walk over it. And those wheels wouldn't be fitted with inflatable tires. No, they would be space wheels. Light, rugged, and of course not liable to puncture or burst in low pressure environments. And although this version weighs two tons, the athlete design is scalable. It can be built a lot smaller or it could be twice as big. Imagine that crawling across the lunar surface towards you. I know it's happening quite slow, but <laughs> Still quite weird and a bit intimidating. For now, Athlete is still earthbound, but it is a reminder of just how much heavy lifting robots have already done across the solar system.